Welcome to part one of this Ableton tutorial series. My name is Isaac Gravel and my website is seattleaudiofile.com. All of these tutorials should be able to be found at seattleaudiofile.com, but this is the first one, so there's nothing there at the moment, except probably this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come down to my Ableton Live in Mac. Uh, if, you are using, if you are using Ableton in a PC, this tutorial will still be relevant. I'll point out any differences as I come across them. Um, but for starters, let's go ahead and talk about the interface. This is the very, very beginning of where you should be in Ableton. In fact, this is probably even further back. This has a little bit of a problem, as you'll notice with the off switch at we're going to need to fix. Um, if you've already got some signal coming out of Ableton, or if you know what I'm talking about, then you might want to just skip ahead to recording audio, which will be the second part of this tutorial series. So this is the interface for Ableton. This is the arrangement view of Ableton. If I hit tab, I go into the mixer view of Ableton, which looks a lot like this. I gotta kind of move around because I'm zoomed in here. Um, we're mostly going to be working in the arrangement view. Uh, so if I hit tab again, I'm just going to go ahead and go right back to the arrangement view. You can also, instead of hitting tab, use these two bubbles up here. That's mixer view and that's arrangement view. So the first thing that we got to figure out is, or that we have to that we have to fix is this off thing. This means that there is no sig there's no way for signal to come out, which is the absolute basic. Uh, that's what you need if you're going to be doing even MIDI. If you don't have a microphone, that's not a problem, but you can still do MIDI as long as you have something set out or some sort of output set up, which I don't right now. So uh, first thing you got to do, and there are multiple ways to get to this place. You can use this drop down and go to configure and it brings up the preferences or you could go up if you're in a Mac hit live preferences in a Windows hit file preferences and it should bring you to this set of preferences that basically determine how Ableton's going to be running on your computer I'm just going to be in the audio tab and we have to select an audio output device and I'm just going to use the built-in output in uh, on my laptop here, which is, I think you can hear it getting cranky in the background. It doesn't like to be running Ableton and doing screen capture at the same time. But uh, if I want, I could also use my ProFire outputs, but I'm not going to do that because I don't, I don't really want to hear them coming out right now. It's, uh, it's just a matter of preference. If you, depending on whatever input device you have, select uh, whatever interface you have, you can select all of your inputs and outputs right there. I'm also, since we're going to be recording audio, going to click the audio input device and go down to my profile. And if I go into my input configuration, these are all of the ins and outs that are available to the profile. If they're selected yellow, that means that Ableton has recognized them and they are usable channels for Ableton. I've only got the first eight selected because the profile straight out of the box comes with eight channels. If I had more extensions, like through an ADAT light pipe or anything like that, I could uh, go in here and add more channels, but for the sake of CPU and um, m sleeking up my interface a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and I went in and unchecked all of these other inputs and outputs. This one output that's selected over here are my my stereo mon my stereo monitors that are plugged into the uh, the the profile, but we won't be dealing with those right now. So I'm going to go ahead hit OK, and now uh, let's close preferences. And I go over here, and now, instead of this area being grayed out and I don't have any channels, here are all the channels that are available to me on my profile. Those are the 1 through 8 that I had selected. And you'll notice channel 3 is the only one that's got any sort of signal coming through it. That's because I've only got a microphone plugged into channel 3 on the profile. If I select channel 3 and then hit the arm button, uh, oh, really quick, this is the arm, solo, channel selection, which is also functions as sort of a mute button, uh, volume, volume control, and panning control. Uh, and also, really quick, these, these controls are a lot easier to deal with on the mixer view. I hit tab, and then here's panning, volume, sends, uh, toggle or mute, whatever you want to call it, solo, and uh, channel arm. Let's go ahead and go back to the arrangement view. 
So you'll notice now that I have channel 3 selected, I've got some signal coming out into channel 1. And so this channel is all ready to record. And uh, we'll be covering recording in the next tutorial. Uh, hopefully that has showed you a little bit of how to get uh, set up in Ableton. Thank you.